The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. It's time to go on the mat. The Cedar Valley's longest running radio show devoted entirely to wrestling. Brought to you by Rolling Ford and the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum on 1650 The Fan. Welcome to On the Mat, special Panther Wrestling Club slash you and I wrestling version of On the Mat. We do it once a month. I'm Jeff Bradley, your host. Uh, going to have a great show today. We're going to start out uh, in just a few minutes here with Brett Robbins, assistant coach at UNI. Going to catch up on the PWC athletes and the UNI uh, athletes that competed last year at Grandview. Second segment, we're going to have Sean Stender, uh, great UNI wrestler. Uh, graduated 2005, I believe. He's a three-time All-American and a national runner-up. That'll be a fun uh, segment, that second segment. And then we'll come back currently uh, on the th- third segment with Rudy Yates, uh, a 125-pound wrestler for University of Northern Iowa. But let's get started here. Uh, I've got Brett Robbins with me, assistant coach at UNI. Brett, how's it going today? It's a beautiful day. Yeah, it's it's this November weather in Iowa. It's pretty incredible right now. Can't beat it right now. Now, just last night, there was uh, quite a little election there. And <laughs> Donald Trump won. Yeah, he did. And the only reason I'm bringing that up is because he must have something with athletes. You know, I saw that Belichick endorsed him and, and Brady, Kurt Schilling. Of course, Gable did towards mm-hmm. the end. But if you remember, he was here a year ago, and he, wanted, and he was going to do a, a rally in the West Gym, so that was before the Iowa caucus. And he kind of recognized up us uh, – sitting up in the stands and brought us down and, and talked to everybody. And, you know, regardless of what your persuasion is, seemed like a nice guy at the time. And, and you know, a year later, guy's president of the United States or president-elect. So what do, what do you recall from that? Anything? Yeah, it was uh, – we had, we had practice, and it was mentioned that he might uh, come in and talk to us. And some guys, uh, you know, went back, and we were able to meet him. And he shook hands with guys. He asked us about wrestling, how things were going. I think uh, Doug tried to wrestle him, or at least go a takedown with him. But uh, and he backed down, I think, if I yeah, remember. Yeah, right. he didn't want a piece of him. He didn't want to mess up his hair. <laughs> but uh, that's right. That is right. <laughs> but no, he he came back and he was he was real nice. He asked some good questions and talked to the guys for a few minutes. Took a picture and then he had to get going. He had a lot of other people to meet, but he had his rally in the West Gym and he did take the time to come back and talk to us and meet us. So it was it was nice to meet the president elect Donald Trump that day. So in your mind, any chance that. You thought you were meeting the next president of the United States that day? Uh, you know, it's tough to say. At, at the I, time, maybe probably not. Yeah, I didn't either. I just thought. I you know, liked him. You know, it was a guy that was here, and he, Donald Trump, and he's got a TV show, and, you know, a lot of money, and a lot of hair, and, and, uh, <laughs> and, and it was just, yeah, it was, it was, it was nice to meet him. He seemed like a nice guy. He's about 6'4, six, 6'3. Six, yeah, he's a big guy. He's, he's a lot bigger than I thought. So, but that was just a little thing that, you know, we met him last year, and now he's president of the United States. Okay, let's get cracking on some PWC news. Uh, big tournament for Joe Laser and Blaze Cabell this year, uh, coming up actually this weekend. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about what the tournament is, uh, what weights they're going? Yeah, so uh, this weekend it's the Bill Farrell International Open, and it used to be called the NYAC Tournament, and uh, it's held in New York City, and uh, they changed the name to Bill Farrell a couple years ago. So Blaze will be wrestling actually in the actual Bill Farrell tournament at 97 kilograms. Um, the guys flew out today. He, you know, he's got some tough competition. Some tough guys weighed in that are registered anyways, and some foreigners will probably come in. And then uh, Joey Lazer's wrestling 61 kilos, and for him, it's an it's a uh, non-Olympic weight world qualifier. So that means if Laser goes out and performs well, wins his weight, he's the Team USA representative. And um, I believe the World Championships will be in Budapest, Hungary, in December. Mm-hmm. So uh, both those guys, they fly out today, uh, weigh in tomorrow, wrestle Friday. And um, you can watch all that, all the action live on Flow if you have a subscription. But they've been back in Cedar Falls. They've been training hard. Uh, Laser got physically a lot stronger. Both guys worked on skills that they needed. And uh, just putting Blaze in those positions, you know, kind of getting – Becoming a little more freestyle savvy and tactical wise and things like that, just getting more experience. And um, he has great leg attacks, so I'm excited to see those guys compete. They seem to be in a good frame of mind this morning. They're cutting a little weight, but they still had smiles on their faces and uh, they seem pretty happy 
uh, where they're at. So those guys actually fly out of Waterloo at 1.15 and uh, again to New York tonight. So looking forward to see how they do. Yeah, hopefully everybody follows those guys. I'm, I'm sure we'll have them, you know, Twitter, um, maybe the PWC Facebook page uh, we can we can update to and obviously flow. Uh, any other big names out there? I know there is. Uh, just a few guys that have dropped in the last few 48 hours. Yeah, like uh, at 61 kilos, there's some guys that have dropped down. Um, uh, we got uh, Stever, Fatrell. I've seen Dardane, Nick Dardanes is down at that weight. Tyler Graff went up from 57. Nashawn Garrett went up from 57. Wow, so that's a good weight. Jason Ness Ooh. dropped down from 65. So um, there was about, I think there were 14 guys registered as of this morning when I saw it, and and it's closed. But you know, Joey's going to have to show up and wrestle, and he's he's kind of a dangerous wrestler too. So see how he does, and you know, I look forward to putting himself in a position to you know be on the world team. You're listening to On the Mat on 1650 The Fan. Brett, uh, I know we have some PWC things coming up, uh, events. Uh, why don't you talk about those? Uh, I know we've got a meeting tonight, but there's a couple additional things you can add in there too. Yeah, so tonight, um, you know, at 7 o'clock down at uh, Derringer's Public Parlor. It's down on Main Street. Uh, we start our first – we have our first official uh, public meeting and that's where fans can come in, and uh, head coach Chuck Schwab will come in, and he'll talk about, you know, you and I wrestling. He'll talk about the PWC. He'll answer questions from the public, and you know, probably give a recap of the weekend that we just had at Grandview and the progress of the guys, and talk about the uh, Bill Farrell tournament coming up this weekend. And it's just a good chance to get more insight into the Panther program. Whereas if you, you know, you're just a casual fan. And we have some diehards that they come to everything, and they're they're always there. So we appreciate the support. But um, if you'd like to come in seven o'clock tonight down at uh, Derringer's, and we're going to have a first public, you know, open public forum meeting, and it's a great chance to get you know more insight into Panther wrestling. And then um, actually a week from today, we have our uh, first membership social. So it's something we started last year, and what we try to do is we try to generate more members for the club. And so if you're a PWC member. We ask you to bring, you know, two, three, four, five people and come down and, and hear what the PWC is about and what it does for our guys and what the money's used for. And just, you know, we, we're trying to promote wrestling at the highest level here in, here in the Cedar Valley. So um, that's going to be at 7 o'clock. That's going to be at Derringer's as well. So it's down on Main Street right above uh, Noble Oak. And, um, you know, we really try to blow that one up. That's our, This one's our big one. And we raised quite a bit of money in it last year. So... Um, if you're a you know a PWC member or someone that's interested in joining the PWC or a big wrestling fan, I encourage you guys to come down and and listen to Duck Talk, and then we're gonna have our PWC athletes there as well. So it's gonna be a great event, a lot of people there, and um, a lot of people that love the sport of wrestling. So come on down. And with those two, the, they're just pretty good interaction. Doug, Doug Schwab, head coach, is gonna talk. Uh, probably the athletes also, but but there's also a Q and A time too. You can you can ask any question you want about you and I or PWC. Yeah, and usually that's at the very end, and he opens it up, and, and Doug will sit there and answer questions all night. He's a pretty um, accessible guy, and, and he's an honest guy. So um, I know he enjoys doing it and uh, try to get as many people there as we can. And then we also have the cancer clinic coming up. Would you like to speak on that a little bit? Yeah, I'll talk about that for a second. Um, we, uh, we started this last year. It was our first cancer clinic, and uh, we did it. Uh, before dual meet, and this year we do the same thing, November 27th at the West Gym, um, 11 to 1230. So 11 o'clock, we'll start our check-in, and uh, Cancer Clinic will end at 1230, but it's 25 bucks at the West Gym, November 27th, um, K through 8th. And what it is, it's a clinic, and it includes, you know, a T-shirt, and we're going to get you lunch, and you get entry into the dual meet against Old Dominion. But the bigger thing is, is it's uh, the money raised, the funds raised at this event. I'll go to... Uh, one of you and I's owns, Kelsey Motley. She was just diagnosed with colon cancer. So it's a great way to give back. And, and we talk about giving back a lot with our guys. And, and then another thing we talk about is perspective. And this is kind of a holy cow. Like, you know, she's a pretty young girl. She's she's roughly my age. And, you know, it, it's a way for us across the street at the West Gym to show her uh, a lot of support and just let her know that a lot of people uh, love her and care about her. So, um, all the proceeds go to her, and um, she can use it as she needs fit. And um, it's just a great event. So if you're interested 
in uh, in signing up or interested in getting any, any more information, the, the flyer is on UNIPanthers.com under the wrestling tab, or you can email myself at richardr at uni.edu for any questions or if you need any information. Yeah, that's a good event. We had it last year. I I took my son. It was good technique. You, you saw a lot of different partners. But the main thing was you're raising funds for, for a much-needed cause, so th- that's a great thing that you can get behind. Um, hey, let's switch gears now. Let's talk about you and I wrestling. Yep. Had our first competition last weekend, uh, Grandview Open, and technically wasn't in Des Moines. It was in uh, Southeast Polk High School, which is a beautiful facility for a wrestling meet. Um, can't hardly believe it's a high school, but I think they had six or eight mats down. One half was uh, the Open, and the other half was uh, the freshman level. Yep. Uh, so let's talk. Um, let's just kind of go weight by weight and, and give some highlights of that. Okay, so, yeah, it was eight mats, and, you know, it was split up, so it was pretty hectic. But, um, you know, 125, we had uh, Jay Schwarm and Tanner Rowe at a wrestling. And, um, you know, both won matches. They ended up having to wrestle each other through the wrestle back. And um, uh, Schwarm won that. But, uh, you know, we, we wrestled each other a lot, so I don't put a whole lot of stock into it. But they both competed hard. And, uh, you know, that's why one of our guys at 33, we had Josh Alver, Darren Needs wrestling. Josh Albert, I thought looked really good. Uh, was in the finals, got a got a takedown right away, escaped, and then you now he gave up, he got a, he got put in a good hold by uh, Jacob Cologne, and ended up getting pinned. So he lost that match, but I liked how he competed. He bounced back. He's in a great mood for this weekend, and I look forward to see what he does on uh, Friday night. Uh, 141, we had uh, Jake Hodges, Jake Cothy, and Tra- uh, Tyler Willers, and um, I think they ended up I think they ended up two four six in the placings and. I thought uh, Jake Hodges looked really well. His defense is really stingy, and he's just he's he's figuring it out, man. And uh, same thing with Colty. Just can he continue to get better with his wrestling skills? Continue to get more mat time because uh, you know he got hurt last year. So both guys just continue to improve. And Willers is a senior, and you know we we look forward to him having a good strong finish towards the senior year to go off with a bang. Uh, One forty nine. We had uh, Max Thompson. He won the weight. And uh, Hunter Washburn wrestling. Uh, both guys won matches. Uh, Max, I thought looked looked really well. His, his uh, finish percentage is going up, so that's good. And and he's got a motor. He's got to wrestle hard the whole time. Uh, Fifty seven. We had uh, coach champs at that weight. Peyton Moore and Seth Stetzel. Both guys made the finals, and um, I thought they both wrestled extremely well. And you know they could have wrestled, but is there a, is there a whole lot of stock in it because they do wrestle a lot in the room. So. Um, you know, they both got had wins, both scored a lot of points, and uh, we kind of left it at that for those two. Um, 65, Coop wrestled. We had a couple other guys, Brody Beck and uh, Dan Kelly wrestled unattached. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, Coop wrestled two matches and was done. Brody Beck, I think, had four matches, went two and two. Liked what I saw out of both of those guys. Uh, 174, Taylor Lujan wrestled, and uh, he ended up winning the weight, but he, he scored a lot of points, and he he doesn't feel like he wrestled his best either, so um, you know it's a challenge to him to get up and get ready for this weekend and and challenge himself and put himself in position to score more points or to wrestle harder and um, you know see how he does. Um, eighty four we had uh, Drew Foster, Jacob Holschlag, and those guys both made the finals, so they were co-champs. Um, Foster has some un- unbelievable leg attacks, super athletic kid. Jacob Holschlag is. Uh, a solid guy and he he's mean on top so they um you know they they a little bit of contrast there but they both wrestle well Russ made the finals uh chase Seedenhelm also wrestled and he got a couple pins uh came back from a really nasty uh wrist break from last season so um it was good to see him out of the mat and you know he's got to just keep wrestling and continue to wrestle he hasn't had a match about a year and a half so. yeah i mean at 184 we placed one two and three yeah so um Continue to keep building on that, you know, on those guys' success. Um, 97, we were open. And then heavyweight, uh, J.J. Everard wrestled. And he, uh, I think J.J. finished fourth. So right. um, took a couple losses, but, you know, and they were close, but he knows he needs to do more in his matches and, you know, not fall into the trap. So uh, he has some unbelievable leg attacks. So just just keep building those leg attacks, put himself in more positions to score, and uh, build off that for the rest of the year. You're listening to On the Mat on 1650 The Fan with Jeff Bradley and Brett Robbins. 
I'll talk about the freshmen just a little bit, uh, Brett, and if you have uh, any comments, just okay. chime right yep. in. Had two champs on the freshman level, Rudy Yates, which uh, coincidentally is our third guest uh, today. He's wrestling at 133 on sat- last Saturday. He's actually a 25-pounder, yep. so he's working his way down. I thought he looked real good. He's got tons of offensive attacks. He's not afraid to go under somebody. Um, he's fun to watch. I think, uh, you know, if you come to UNI Open and see him, you're going you're gonna to get your money's worth. Uh, then on the other end of the spectrum, Carter Isley, heavyweight. Uh, I'm not so sure. No, he did. He went, I think he had three pins and then a major decision in the finals. What I saw out of him, real athletic. I mean, he's already a heavyweight. You don't have to build him into a heavyweight. He's 250. Like I said, athletic, athletic as heck. And he was beating the guy in the finals by four or five and could have just easily just kind of laid on him and ran the timeout. Ended up cutting him, taking him down to his back for the major, which shows you that, you know, he wants to finish on top and wants to, um, you know, I don't know about humiliate a guy, but dominate a guy just yeah, and, and just put that in his Yeah, continue to build, build his lead, score points, and, and finish strong. And that's what we preach to our guys. You know, a couple other guys I thought looked good. Cam Lopez, uh, he's a true freshman out of Illinois. He ended up getting third, wrestled six matches, went four and two. Um, I think the only thing holding him back right now is he's not in, in real tip-top shape. But, man, he wrestles hard, and he's and he's dangerous too. Yeah, I think he's just kind of a strong kid too, and, you know, he does go hard. He wrestles really hard in the room, so continue to build his shape, keep his weight under control, get a little more solid as far as in the weight room, and, you know, I think he's going to be a, a really good addition to our team. Well, we just have just a couple minutes left in this segment here. Brett, let's talk about the schedule coming up uh, just in the near term here. So we've got uh, Utah Valley and Nebraska Kearney Friday night. It's a double duel. They will wrestle each other, I believe, at 4.30. I think, four, I think 4 o'clock. At 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock will be the first one, yep. Then I think we wrestle Kearney at 5.30. Yep, and five thirty, five forty five, yeah, roughly. And then, and then Utah Valley, Utah roughly Valley, seven thirty, seven forty five. So it'll be on flow wrestling, but you know we really encourage you to come to the West Gym and, and support the guys and, and make that you know the hardest place in Division One to wrestle. Um, you know, big one coming up on the eighteenth, Virginia Tech. Yeah, they're they're a top five team in um in pretty much every poll I've seen, and they have uh, multiple All Americans back. So, I mean, they they have a lot of tough guys, especially the upper weights. I mean, there's really not, you know, a weak spot in their lineup. They have guys that can pick them up, too. So, uh, we're going to have to show up. We're going to have to be at our best and put out our best lineup. So, um, we had them there in a, a couple years ago because we've had home and away with them. And, you know, we had a close meeting at home. And um, it was it was a hot, loud, rowdy environment, and that's what we like. So, we hopefully we can get as many people in that West Gym on the 18th as we can. Yeah, and, and Dresser's fun to coach against. You know, he uh, he's not afraid to wrestle anybody. No. He'll travel all the way across the country and then back to, just to wrestle anybody. So um, I think that's going to do it for this segment. Brett, appreciate it. We'll be right back with On the Mat. Log on and listen online at 1650thefan.com, the online home of 1650 The Fan. Welcome back to On the Mat. We got segment number two here with Sean Stender, a three-time All-American at the University of Northern Iowa, and a runner-up in 2005. Sean, how are you doing? Hey, not too bad. How you doing, Jeff? Real good. It's a beautiful day out. Nice fall day. We're gonna talk some wrestling. Uh, yeah, you can't it, beat this for November. It's real good. Hey, so first, first two questions, pretty easy. Uh, when you're a first guest, you have to answer these. It's from my kids, okay. and okay. my daughter wants to know. She's only 10, but she wants to know what your favorite color is. I'd have to go blue. Okay, and my son wants to know what your favorite food or meal is. Oh, geez, that's a toss-up. I'd have to go lasagna. I feel like I'm kind of like Garfield. That's probably my go-to. <laughs> Gar- and my mother-in-law makes one heck of a lasagna, oh. so that's what I'll go with. I haven't had lunch yet, and that sounds real good. <laughs> Hey, Sean, what, you know, I know you wrestled when you were a youngster, but what, how'd you get into the sport and at what age? Well, yeah, I remember I was probably, I think I was like right around five years old. I might've been in kindergarten and my brother, who's three and a half years older than me, was supposed to go wrestle at a tournament at Davenport Assumption. 
And I remember being at my grandparents' house, and with like the day before the tournament, my brother got sick. And I told my dad, I'm like, Dad, I'll go wrestle. He's like, he looked at me like, you know, like sideways, like, are you sure? He's like, I don't even know if they have, you know, kids your age can wrestle. And I told him, well, if they do, I'll do it. And sure enough, they had a little kid's bracket. And I went. I think there was two other kids at my at my weight that was there. And I showed up in a Care Bear t-shirt and biking shorts and wrestled in my first tournament. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I had some, like, L.A. gear tennis shoes on. I right. probably would roll my ankle in if I wore nowadays. But uh, I ended up wrestling that tournament. I think I ended up winning it second or first. I know I beat a guy, so... That's kind of how I got into the sport, I guess. So I, I remember your brother, What, and of course not at that age, but he was a big dude. Did you guys have a lot of scraps? when you? When you... Yeah, we always did. I think we, I think we drove my mom crazy. Um, a lot of times in the house, you know, my parents would be like downstairs and we're upstairs, and all of a sudden all hell would break loose on the ceiling of the floor, and me and him would be bouncing around, throwing each other, and kind of funny years later my dad had to go back in there to reattach the ceiling in the basement because it had pulled loose and it was kind of drooping down so i I think that's a little bit from uh, me and my brother growing up and then let's get back to him did he wrestle at loris do i have that right uh he wrestled at luther oh that's right luther yeah yeah. heavyweight he was a big guy mm -hmm. 260 65 yeah that's that's what i remember so tell me when when was the time that you finally got the best of him since he was three years older than you? Gosh, to be honest with you, I don't know if I ever did. I I, I know we kind of scrapped a little bit when I was in college one time back at North Scott High School over Christmas. And I know I got a takedown on him, but I wouldn't say I got the better of him. I think I was a freshman redshirting that year at UNI, and he was, I think he was a senior at that time at Luther. And he was still a pretty dang good wrestler, so he was, he was hard to handle. He's a big, leveraged, long guy, so... I know if he took me down, I had a hard time getting out. <laughs> yeah, I remember my my older brother, Mike, five years older, it took me a long time. I think I was 19 or 20 before I finally finally even thought yeah. about, you know, getting the best of him. And, but it felt good, just getting a little <laughs> getting a little revenge after all those years. Yeah, I know North Scott's trying to get me to come back to wrestle in the alumni meet and wrestle with him. But to be honest, I don't want to because one of us will end up getting hurt. <laughs> so if you do do that, send me a text. I will drive down will, to watch that. You know, I will, I, will. I will pay to watch that match. They'll probably have to pay me to get me to go do it. <laughs> so after, you know, wrestling the Care Bear outfit, did you have, did you just continue to wrestle? Did you have early success, you know, through grade school and junior high? Um, yeah, I'd say, you know, I wrestled a few tournaments here and there when I was young. Not a lot. I'd say by the time I was probably third or fourth grade is when I started wrestling a lot more matches. You know, I'd get anywhere from 30 to 50 matches, probably. I think I had, like, 50 matches when I was in sixth grade, and that was probably the most I ever wrestled. Um, but, I, you know, growing up, I'd say from when I could go wrestle in the AAU Kids State Tournament, I got third or fourth pretty much every time, and then I won it when I was in sixth grade. So that was the first time I won it. And then in eighth grade, I had a ruptured appendix, and I couldn't play any sports that year. So I ended up getting a scar, you know, a 12-inch scar on my, on my stomach, and the doctors made me sit out wrestling and football that year, so I kind of lost a step going into eighth grade, but I had to somehow make that up, and I think having my brother and some of his friends and going in and wrestling in the high school room really kind of helped me out and get me back to where I was. So when did you kind of realize that you had a knack for it and you were good? Was, was it when you were placing at AUs, when you were competing with older brother in the North Scott room, or, or, or did it take uh, yeah. you know, placing at the state tournament when you were in high school? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like I always thought I was really good, even when I was in third grade, <laughs> fourth grade, fifth grade, getting third at AAU. But I could never get over that hump, you know, and win it. And I finally won it in sixth grade, and I think about then is when I got a lot of confidence. But then I kind of got grounded again after that because I missed all of my matches in seventh grade, and then I came back in eighth grade, and I was about average. So it kind of it was hard to, to get myself mentally back to where I was, but... I put the work in, and then as a freshman coming into high school, I had beat out a senior who was returning, you know, one of the better wrestlers. He, I think he had like six, seven losses his junior year, and I beat him out in the wrestle-off. And I think after that it just kind of took off, and I had a lot of confidence and knew I could go out there and win. 
What other sports did you play through uh, junior high and high school? Uh, I played football and baseball. So I imagine you were, you know, you're very athletic. I imagine you're a pretty good football player. Yeah, I ended up, I think, uh, my my senior year, I was first team All-State inside linebacker. And then baseball, I just kind of played town ball just for fun. I feel like once, you know, football was over, wrestling was over, I just couldn't get into the baseball thing in the summertime, so... I did a lot of summer wrestling and just lifted weights and did all the agility stuff for the football team. So do you think being a you know a high-caliber wrestler uh, really benefited you being a football player? Uh, for sure. I think it goes both ways. You know, being a good football player helped me be a good wrestler. Being a good wrestler helped me be a good football player. I think uh, the mentality of team sports kind of helps, you know, deal with adversity and losing because sometimes in wrestling if if all you do is wrestle I think losing becomes a little bit harder to learn from it some guys I come across guys that just all I did was wrestle and they take a loss and it, it hit them too hard or guys that go to college that are top tier recruits that you know that's all I did was wrestle and then they, they'd start losing coming into college and it was hard to take I feel like uh, growing up playing all these different sports and even handling losses and just kind of bettering myself and figuring out what had happened, what went wrong. And I feel like that's what kind of helped me become a better wrestler for sure. Hey, let's jump up to high school now. Uh, senior year, you won a state championship. Talk about uh, kind of what got you there and, and what motivated you to win that state championship your senior year. Um, I'd say losing in the finals my junior year. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's, it's hard to take a loss like that under on such on such a big stage when I think I feel like I was favored to win it that year. Um, I mean, I lost to a guy from Fort Dodge, Josh Porter, who was a really mm-hmm. good wrestler. He ended up being undefeated in high school. I think his only loss was at the state duel to Drew Kelly, who's a good friend of mine, which he likes to rub in my face once in a while when I see him. But, you know, you take losses like that, and you definitely don't ever want to feel that feeling again. And I knew in talking with my coaches, they're like, you're going to dominate, you're going to pin everybody, you're going to pin your way through state. And I feel like having that confidence in my coaches kind of gave me confidence within myself to be able to go out and do that. And I almost pinned my way through. I pinned everybody. I just I had one major decision. Couldn't keep him on his back. <laughs> Talk a little bit about the influences you had, coaches, uh, parents, anything like that. Uh, my brother was always a big influence. I mean, him... You know, he was a great athlete, and he was, he kind of pushed me. I always wanted to be better than him. Um, and then, like, my high school football coach was a great coach. He was one of those guys that just was like a no-excuse guy, work hard, you'll, you'll win. Um, and I think that mentality kind of, I mean, it just became who I was, and I just knew whether maybe I was just dumb, I don't know, or naive, even when, when I got into college, I'm like, I thought I was better than everybody that I wrestled. Obviously, I didn't win all my matches, but going into it, no matter who I wrestled, I thought I could win. So then after you won that state championship, I, I remember watching you at the Charles City, the All-Star meet. Did you wrestle two matches that t- uh, after your senior year? No. You didn't? Who'd I just you... wrestled one. I just wrestled uh, Trey Clark. Trey Cl- and, and you won that match, didn't you? I won that match. I think it was like I a couple takedowns I beat him by. Yeah. For some reason, I thought it was you, him, and Potabom in there. Remember that Potabom from Lott and Bronson that went to Iowa yeah, State? And yeah. I thought, and I thought you wrestled them both, but uh, yeah, I, I do remember you beating Trey Clark. That was a that was a big hyped up match. Yeah, it was. You know, it was fun to do, and I really wanted it. You know, I really wanted to win. I knew I could win. Um, in all respect for him, you know, he went out and won three uh, state titles in Iowa, which is hard to do. And, you know, obviously I didn't get to that point, but I, I got one. But, you know, it was important for me to go out there and win that match, especially going into college, knowing I was going to be a college wrestler at UNI. Hey, talk a little bit about the recruiting process. I mean, obviously you ended up coming to UNI, but uh, number one, was it always wrestling or were you thinking wrestling or, and or football at one time? And then who else was looking at you for wrestling and why did you ultimately uh, come to UNI? Yeah, I mean, I, I was open. You know, I, I came out of football season. We we had always been a losing program. Um, and we went out, went like 8-1 eight and, eight and one in the regular season. We ended up losing a heartbreaker in the first round of the playoffs. And after that was over, I, I told myself, I'm playing football. There's no way I'm going to wrestle. You know, I just had more love for the sport. And then 
you know, it made that transition into wrestling. Wrestling went well in one state, and then after wrestling was over, I was like, I'm probably going to wrestle in college. It's just kind of funny when you're young, you know, you can how your mind can change so quickly. But, you know, I wanted to be able to go Division One, and, you know, I had some Division One walk-on offers. But, you know, ultimately I wanted to get the scholarship. I wanted to go see how good I was. And I think I knew by probably after the All-Star meet, or before that I was going to wrestle Division One, And, you know, I talked to Nebraska, Iowa State, UNI, uh, Edinburgh, and ultimately decided that uh, UNI was a place for me. I just love the coaches. I love the, the, the athletes that were there. And when I came in on my visit, I was just sold on them. And I told my dad, I actually went to UNI on like a Friday and then Iowa State on a Saturday for a visit overnight. And after I left UNI, I told my dad, I'm like, I'm going to UNI, even before I went to Iowa State. <laughs> so then you end up placing in the country three three different times, and your senior year you get second. I wanted to talk about the semifinal match that puts you in the finals, and you beat John Trend, who's just a great wrestler. Talk about that yeah. match a little bit. Well, I think it goes much further than just that match. You know, we can go back to my junior year where I'm wrestling Ryan Fultz in the semifinals, and and in my mind, I think I was picked to win that match. I was a better wrestler in my head, and I I thought I wrestled a good match. It was it was a, it was a long, grueling match, and I ended up losing in a heartbreaking takedown, with literally like a second or two left. Um, and this kind of goes back to where I was in high school when I lost that match year, year before in the finals. It's just the worst feeling you could ever imagine. I mean, as an athlete, you know, you, you have it right there, right, right in your grasp, and you end up end up letting it slip with hardly any time. And I knew the next year that I'm like, no matter who I have or what, where I'm going, nobody's going to stop me. And that was just kind of my mindset going into wrestling trench. I had wrestled them before. I wrestled them in freestyle. I wrestled them, uh, I think it was a national duels that year. And it was like a one or two point match. So we ended up both coming out. I think I was, I was seated fifth. He was first. Everybody's talking about trench. And I actually heard him in the back room. We're sitting there. This is before the, like, the tournament even started. And he's like talking about it to some, somebody else. He's like, if I win here, I'll wrestle this guy, then I'll wrestle this guy, then I'll have Fender, and then I'll be in the finals against whoever. I think it was like Rochold. And I was just like, yeah, right. There's no way. There's no way you're going through me. So we ended up meeting in the semis, so I was ready to go. You know, I had dealt with heartbreak the year before. It wasn't going to happen again. I had wrestled him before, so I knew I could beat him, and that's just what ended up happening. I went out there, took him down a couple times. Um, he couldn't take me down, and I sealed up the match. And what kind of feeling is that now? You know you're in the finals. You've got a chance to you know, reach the goal, one more match. And then you know, kind of a bonus is you're not wrestling Saturday morning in the placings you know, a couple times to, you know, to get, try to get a third or a fourth or a fifth or a sixth. Was that, you know, but it wasn't time to celebrate, but it had to be a huge weight off your shoulders making the finals. Yeah, it felt great. I mean, like I said, you go from where you were the year before um, then to where you're at the, you know, my senior year and, and I knew I could win it. I knew I could beat Rochold. I wrestled him before. I, I, I mean, he's a great wrestler. He's he's well rounded. I think, um, you know, things just happen. It's just you know, I I didn't win it, but you know, like I said, going in, I felt good. Everything felt good about it. You know, I had the confidence to beat him. It just it just wasn't 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 my day, I guess. So, how often do you kind of play that back through your mind? I I, I rewatch that. Uh, I remember watching it live, and then I, I rewatched it on tape, and it kind of yeah. went back and forth. You know, you scored, then he scored and got ahead, and then you know towards the end it was tied up, and just needed. I think we needed a little writing time, didn't we? Or, or a write out. I did. I had yeah. to get rid of the writing time, and I had to keep him down to to send it into OT. So he got an escape. I you know I was holding on to his shoelaces, and he had kicked out. But yeah, I mean that match. You know, to be honest with you, you know I, I got the first takedown. And then he got in on a good uh, left hand and high crotch, which, you know, he hadn't shot on me before when I wrestled him in the duel. So he kind of caught me off guard. They scouted it, and he got in. I remember fighting it, and my rib popped. And the year before, my rib did the same thing, wrestling for my fifth and sixth place match. <clears throat> and kind of in my head, I was just like, this isn't good. Because I couldn't finish that match my junior year. So you start, it kind of takes you out of your, your mode that you're in. And in my head, I'm like, all right, was that you know, is this the same injury? Is this going to put me out? Um, and then after they took a look at me and, you know, I kind of 
started wrestling again as the match got going. It felt fine. But, you know, you know, I got in on shots, and I felt good after that. I just, you know, the couple on-the-edge takedowns, I just couldn't get him back in to finish him. And he has good defense. He's just a scrappy little wrestler, and and he he did what he had to do to win. Hey, we just have about a, a minute left here, Sean, in this segment. Uh, can you talk a little bit about some of your UNI teammates? I know you said Drew Kelly, and I consider him a friend of mine too, great guy. Talk about yep. him and, and some other guys and, and how close-knit you guys were. Yeah, we, you know, to be honest, I was blessed to be going to, the, to that school at that time. I mean, even now, they're all, all those kids are great. I just love the camaraderie. I mean, we're talking all these guys from Iowa. you got the Paul Henix, you got the Bob Koenig, Heston Johnson, Jeff Harrison, uh, Keith Pearl. I mean, you can, you can go down the list. Jordan Holm, like all these guys. They're still great friends of mine today. I try to reach out to them and talk to them as much as I can. And we pushed each other. You know, you guys like Kyle Hansen, Randy Pugh. I mean, all these guys from Iowa. It was just a unique situation to be in. And I was fortunate to be there with those guys, you know, good friends. And like I told you before, you know, when I was in high school playing sports, playing football, wrestling, multiple sport athlete, a lot of those guys were the exact same way. So we all came in. We all had wrestled, played football in high school. And we were all just kind of the same mold. And we worked hard. And, and we loved hanging out with each other. We had a good time. Well, Sean, that's going to do it. I really appreciate you being on, uh, you know, taking the time out of your day, being on the show. Uh, Sean Stender, three-time All-American at UNI. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We'll be back with On the Map. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When all you want is sports, all you need is 1650 The Fan. Welcome back to On the Map. This is Jeff Bradley on 1650 The Fan. Third and final segment uh, for this show, and we're going to have a redshirt freshman who's been on campus oh, a couple months now, Mr. Rudy Yates. Rudy, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm I'm perfect. You know, it, it's a beautiful day out. Um, you know, I was talking to Brett Robbins in the first segment. You know, Donald Trump came and visited <laughs> West Gym last year, you know, drumming up support before the caucus. And I know you're a fan because you're wearing a T-shirt right now of him. So yeah. um, go ahead. You're probably a happy guy right now, aren't you? Yeah, for sure. Um, I know he won a lot of swing states that I wasn't expecting him to win, and I was a little nervous about Florida, but when he pulled that off, I I knew we were in a good spot. And then especially closing out with winning Pennsylvania, that was huge. And I know um, yesterday I think they said that it's the first time since 2000 Iowa was a red state. So that was pretty okay. big, too. That shocked me a little bit. So how late did you stay up watching returns? Uh, I um, It was about 1 a.m., and Pennsylvania was – 97 percent in for about 45 minutes and it didn't change at all so i'm like all right i gotta go to bed because i knew i had to be up early to work out yeah it's funny with all this technology i I agree because that's about the time i sacked out too and it's all these different states were like at 98 97 99 i'm like how is it not almost instantaneous that you Mm -hmm. get these results back but okay hey let's start the interview um just had Sean Stender on. He was a first-time guest. Now I've got you. First-time guest, the first questions you have to answer from my from my kids, my 10-year-old my 12-year-old. And you know Jake, my 12-year-old. Yep. Well, Morgan, my 10-year-old, wants to know what your favorite uh, color is. Um, that would be red. It's it's tough because I, um, I do wear a lot of pink, like, <laughs> with wrestling. And uh, part of that's due to, like, breast cancer awareness. But red is my favorite color, and then blue is probably close second. And my son Jake wants to know what your favorite food and or meal is. Favorite food, that actually, that's changed a lot, but it's got to be pizza because with pizza, I mean, even bad pizza is good pizza. So I don't even like Little Caesars that much, but if you put it in front of me, I'll eat the whole thing. So, I mean, you're a Chicago guy more or less, so what's uh, what, what's your pizza over there? What do you like? Probably the best pizza in Chicago is uh, Lou Malnati's. That's it's unreal. It's a uh, deep dish pizza, and they uh, they do things a little differently. Instead of putting on, like, pizza sausage, it's one giant sausage patty that goes on the whole pizza. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's different. It's really good, though. You know, you were talking about uh, the color pink, and I, I don't know how many people have seen you compete, but you wear pink wrestling shoes. Yeah. Now, is it – are you always wearing pink? Is it just special occasions you're wearing pink shoes? Um, Probably the – 
probably the past three years since maybe my sophomore year of high school, I started wearing a lot more pink because uh, my Aunt Karen and uh, Sandy um, both died of breast cancer about three years ago. And it hit me pretty hard, and I actually have a tattoo of them on my ribs to remember them. And ever since then, I've been wearing pink shoes, pink socks, anything pink I can get on. Now, Rudy, you won uh, three state championships in, uh, in, in high school, Illinois, at Carl Sandburg. But I want to take you back. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I want to take you back to, oh, I don't know, five, six years old. Whenever you first started wrestling, and kind of what was the motivation, or how did you get involved with the sport? Um, well, my dad wrestled in high school, and he didn't start till his freshman year. And he was uh, JV all four years because the high school that he went to, Morton West, they actually won three state titles as a team when he joined the team. So yeah. he didn't crack the starting lineup, but he liked it a lot. And um, he didn't know that there was kids wrestling, but one of his buddies said to him one day that he should sign me up and. He uh, he said no because he didn't think that there was kids wrestling, but we found out that there was. So I made my way down to uh, Oklahoma Wildcats wrestling. Um, they're not a club anymore, but they helped me out a lot. I know um, a lot of motivation was my first two years I didn't win a match. So it was really tough to deal with, but I really liked the sport. And I had a lot of coaches tell my dad that, hey, maybe you should look at other sports while he's young. He's just He's got cement feet and he... I don't think he's going to be able to develop into the sport, but I told my dad, I'm like, I'm not not really too good at any other sports either, and I enjoy this the most. So when you say you didn't win a match for two years, what what years of life was that? When you were seven and eight, when you were ten and eleven, seven and eight okay. years old. So it's I don't I don't even have a theory on this. It just seems like it's almost split down the middle. That when I ask people if they have had early success, it's either it's not like a 500 wrestler. It's either pretty bad or really pretty good yeah and the pretty good obviously common sense will tell you you know you're having success you keep pushing through it i'm i'm more interested in the guys that struggle early on and what motivated you to to keep wrestling when you weren't getting your hand hand raised yeah it's just um it's a little different uh mindset because i know like there's a lot of good wrestlers one example is uh austin o'connor he was he came out around the same age that I did wrestling wise and I think his first two years wrestling he maybe had two or three losses on the year right. and then I had about 30 so it's just um different mentally and I feel like I can just push myself a little bit harder because I've been in those rough times and now that things aren't as rough it's a lot easier to push myself through those last moments of the match so you know just having known you a few months now um, you kind of have an infectious attitude, and you really have great confidence. And I don't want to say it's not even borderline cocky at all that I get, but I think you're supremely confident in your abilities. Where does that Where does that come from? Um, I'd probably say most of it from my dad because my dad and Alex Sertz is from uh, Region Wrestling Academy. He's good friends with Doug Schwab, but um, I mean. When I was younger, I was at Gomez Wrestling Academy, and it was a lot of pressure because they, uh, they're pretty tough on the kids, and I know that. It didn't screw me up. It helped me a little bit become mentally tough, but I, uh, I was always nervous before my matches, and then when we left them, my dad just told me, he goes, win or lose, he goes, just do what you do in the practice room, and you're going to be fine, and he, uh, he said that to me ever since I was about 10 years old, and then it's been repeated in my head all through high school through Alex Sertzis, and he tells me, he goes, I know how hard you work in the practice room, and if you work half as hard when you wrestle a match, you're going to be totally fine. So I uh, just go out there and have fun, and win or lose, my dad is always proud of me, so that's another thing in the back of my mind, knowing right. that I can let it fly. You're listening on the mat on 1650 The Fan with Jeff Bradley and Rudy Yates. Rudy, you've got uh, some great high school credentials. You won your first state title as a freshman. Um, I kind of want to delve into that year, and then we'll talk about your subsequent years after that. But did – I mean, were you ranked number one halfway through the year? Was it a kind of a surprise, uh, you know, victory? Or were you kind of beating guys all the way through the year? Um, well, I ended up going 42-0 and on the year, but um, definitely was a surprise because – 
I know I was ranked high initially. I think I was starting off number five in the state before I even wrestled a match, but mainly that was because eighth grade year I wrestled 115, and then when I came down to 106, they just put me there because they said he's a big freshman at six. So right. that was part of it. But then I started uh, getting a few wins that I don't think I even expected, and I just slowly climbed up until state tournament. I came in ranked number two, and I know I had to wrestle uh, – Miguel Silva from Plainfield South, who was a junior in high school and just won Fargo a couple months ago. Yeah. So I know I was pretty nervous, but, again, I just went into it and said, win or lose, there's about 3 billion Chinese that don't care about this match. <laughs> that, that's a fact. Yeah, that's what Coach Wick uh, told me right before I wrestled, so that's a big part of me. So then your sophomore year, well, let's back up. So after you win that freshman year, looking back on it now, was that – was that the hardest one of the three to win? Um, well, I actually won it my freshman, junior, and senior. But um, but of those three? Oh, yeah, for sure, because just the confidence level my freshman year definitely wasn't even close uh, to as high as my junior and senior year. And at Brother Ice High School, I had a great coach, Bill Wick, who yeah. actually won two national titles at Northern Iowa, mm-hmm. but... I had a great coach in him. I just I didn't have the practice partners in order to get me there. So a lot of times after practice for high school, I'd have to drive an hour to Indiana to wrestle with Alex Sertzis, and it was just tough on me and tough on my body. And I was able to get through it freshman year, but sophomore year it just it became too much. So that was definitely my uh, hardest state title to win. So then after you won as a freshman, was your did you kind of have a – Get in, the, get in the zone like, hey, I'm going for four now. Or, yeah, or was it just sure. day by day, just keep going through the grind and, and get better and see where that takes me? I think um, I think going for four consumed me a little too much because after I won freshman year, I kind of thought that I was invincible, and I know I wasn't wrestling as hard in the summer as I ever was. So, I mean, I was taking a lot of days off. And then what also didn't help is about a month before Super 32, I cracked my sternum in half during practice so I was out for a really long time and when I came back I just I could never find that conditioning level I had and just too little too late so so then we move into your junior year and if I remember right you go undefeated your junior year I think you bump up a weight kind of from what the weight you know you would naturally be yeah to wrestle a guy going for his fourth title. Do I remember that correctly? Yeah, yep. I was um supposed to be about supposed to be a 120 pounder cuz I only weighed about 127 pounds, so um it wouldn't even be that much of a cut, but uh I told my dad I'm like if I want to be the best, I got to beat the best and I know Chris Williams, I mean, he had a few losses in a, his career but was perfect at state. Right. So, I told my dad I'm like if there's one guy that I think would look the best on my bracket board. It would be Chris Williams. So I looked up to him too because he was a year older than me. And I know when I was in eighth grade, I told my dad, "I'm like, man, I want to wrestle like Chris Williams one day." And then when I knew I had the chance to wrestle, I'm like, "I, I got to do it." Yeah, I remember watching that actually, uh, Illinois State Finals. I think I was over at Doug Schwab's house. And we watched it, and it was it was a good match. But you won that match. But I think the more th- this is really the bigger point to me is. It seems like a lot of guys are dodging other guys at weight classes where you, you kind of said, I want to wrestle this guy. I want to see yeah. how good he is and how good I am. And kind of a refreshing perspective. I like that. Yep. So you're going for your third title, senior year. Uh, you end up being a three-time uh, champ in Illinois, which has got phenomenal high school wrestling. Uh, just recapping your high school experience, uh, how do you think you did? Um, overall, I think I did pretty well. I finished, I think, uh, 168 wins and three losses, all three coming from sophomore year. But, um, I think I did all right. And I think, of course, I would have liked to go undefeated, but at the end of the day, I mean, mindset wise, it's, it's not about going undefeated. It's just kind of what Doug says, just the process and just slowly getting better. And I know I'll have tough kids this year and hopefully, I mean, I think I forgot who told me, but somebody told me that there's a possibility of having Eric Montoya and Earl Hall this weekend. And I mean, I'm I'm praying that I do because I know wrestling those guys can only get me better. And win or lose, I'll have a lot to go over back in the practice room. 
We just have a couple minutes left. Rudy, talk a little bit about your recruitment and then how you eventually decided to come to UNI. Um, well, it was actually pretty easy. Um, went on a couple unofficials, and I really loved the university. And I kept telling myself that I had a top five, but in reality it was it was pretty much top one from the beginning. I, When I met Doug Schwab, he reminded me exactly of Alex Sertzis, and that's probably – one of the best coaches I've ever had in my career. And when I found out how good of friends they were, and Doug used to be Alex's coach, and a lot of Alex's ideas come from Doug, I'm, I told my dad, I'm like, this is probably going to be my coach for the next five years of my life, and I'm I'm pretty okay with that. And did Josh Albert have, <clears throat> excuse me, Josh Albert have anything to do with it? Yeah, yep, all the practice partners. I mean, I know um, – PWC still had Joe Colon and Joey Laser there, uh, Josh Elber, Dylan Peters. And I knew they were still bringing in guys for me to work with, they said, when they were recruiting me. So I just uh, I felt really confident in practice partners and coaches and just the whole organization that was going on. Okay, Rudy, less than a minute here. Uh, I know it's not very much time, but can you just give us – you had your first competition, you won a, a, a title down at Grandview – kind of recap how your performance was down there um I think uh I wrestled really well and I think I could have done a little bit better on my weight cut but um I'm proud of the way I wrestled for my first college open and I'm looking forward to a lot more college matches okay that's going to do it for today's show I want to thank Sean Stender Rudy Yates this is Jeff Bradley thanks for supporting the world's greatest sport amateur wrestling good night You've been listening to On The Mat, the Cedar Valley's longest-running radio show devoted entirely to wrestling. Brought to you by Rolling Ford and the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum on 1650 The Fan. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.